161 people remain as hostages in the Gaza Strip. That number includes 146 Israelis and 15 foreigners. That doesn't include uh, dual nationals. 126 are men and 35 are women. There are still four children under the age of 18, four aged 18 to 19, and 10 people aged 75 uh, and older, including the husbands of many of the elderly women who have been released from captivity and now returning home with their husbands still hostages of Hamas. As of today, 86 hostages have been released from captivity. 66 of them are Israeli nationals. That's 60 Israelis as part of the agreement uh, to secure their release, and 20 foreign nationals. In addition to those 66, two hostages, uh, in addition to those 86, two hostages were murdered in captivity, and their bodies located by our IDF soldiers. They are, of course, Noah Marciano and cancer patient Yehudit Weiss, who was held in Hamas captivity without her life-saving medication. There are also four hostages and MIAs in Gaza from before October 7th, dating back to the 2014 war. Israel is committed to bring all of the hostages home, whether through this current hostage release pause or after further pressure. Last week's government decision provides for a five-day extension of the hostage release pause with enough violent criminals in Israeli prisons lined up for release to get another 50 hostages out, 40 at this point, 10 a day. And the government has also approved a list of another 50 violent criminals for prospective release should Hamas decide to continue releasing hostages and letting them go home. As the survivors of Hamas captivity return home over the last week, we're beginning to discover new chilling details about life as Hamas hostages. I'm, of course, not at liberty to share information from the official investigations, but the evidence that the families have been sharing with the media is chilling. The hostages were not held in reasonable conditions, as some have cynically claimed. Our children were serially abused. Just like Hamas recorded its own crimes against humanity on October 7th, it continues to document its own atrocities, releasing footage of crowds terrorizing the hostages in their final moments of captivity. Those scenes bringing to mind that scene from Game of Thrones and fans of the uh, series will, of course, know which scene I'm talking about. And we welcome uh, international condemnation, notably from the German ambassador to Israel, His Excellency Stefan Zeibert, about the disgraceful conditions that Hamas terrorists manufactured around the hostages to terrorize them in their last minutes of captivity. The testimonies are harrowing. Uh, little Emily Han's father, Thomas, has movingly told media that she only speaks in whispers because she was conditioned not to make a noise. He sees the terror in her eyes. She thought that she had been held hostage for a whole year. Her face is gaunt. She thought that everyone, including her father, had been murdered or abducted on October 7th, and her father has had to break the news to her that her stepmother had also been murdered on that dark day. He says she cries herself to sleep until her face is red. She didn't want any comfort, said Mr. Hand. I guess she forgot how to comfort herself. She got under the covers, covered herself, and cried quietly. Not reasonable conditions by any stretch of the imagination. 12-year-old Eitan Yahalomi, uh, according to his aunt, was threatened at gunpoint when he cried, forced to watch films of Hamas atrocities, those being the films uh, we assume that Hamas recorded on its own GoPros on October 7th, and was beaten in the streets when he was abducted into Gaza on October 7th. Uh, Daphna and Ella Eliakim, aged 15 and 8, told their grandmother that their captors told them that nobody wanted them back home and scared them with the threat that they would be killed. Now, their father, uh, partner, partner's son were all murdered on October 7th, and I can't imagine um, the extent of the psychological horror and terror that they endured. Little girls being told uh, that nobody wanted them back home. Hostages have also told media that if they needed to go to the bathroom, they had to knock on the door and wait an hour before they were able to go. The health ministry has reported that elderly women abducted by Hamas lost between 8 and 15 kilos on average, as well as, of course, being denied vital medication. This is starvation. This is abuse. This is torture. Hamas continues to deny the remaining hostages access to the Red Cross, 
until the moment that it passes them on to the Red Cross through jeering crowds. We demand that the Red Cross be given access, but now at least the world can see why Hamas is not allowing the Red Cross to check on the condition of the hostages being held in inhumane conditions. It is an international humanitarian moral duty to demand that the Red Cross fulfil its most basic responsibility. An operational military update. Uh, yesterday, the IDF notified the families of three fallen soldiers uh, abducted by Hamas of their deaths. The three fallen soldiers fell in the battles on October 7th and were abducted by Hamas into Gaza. Their deaths were confirmed after examining all the evidence we had and receiving additional reliable evidence. The IDF has notified the families of 395 soldiers that their loved ones fell in battle, as well as 59 members of the police forces. Yesterday, uh, three IEDs, improvised explosive devices, were detonated at two different locations in the northern Gaza Strip. In one of those instances, our forces were also fired upon, and our forces returned fire towards the source of that gunfire. This was a clear violation of the rules of the hostage release pause. The safety of our forces remains our top priority, and we repeat that any attempt to harm our forces, especially during this hostage release pause, but of course during ongoing hostilities, will be met forcefully. The IDF continues to use this hostage release pause to strengthen our preparations and approve battle plans for the continuation of the war to destroy Hamas in response to the October 7th massacre, and we will continue when Hamas stops releasing hostages, continuing towards those main goals of destroying Hamas so it can never hurt our people following the October 7th massacre and bringing home all of the hostages, this war will end with the end of Hamas.